Alrighty then. So, hello everyone. If you like cheap ass 80s SNL, this might be the movie for you, or skit, or whatever. Now, remember, if you enjoy this review and any other content that we happen to release on the channel, past, present, or future, be sure to share our stuff. Subscribe to the channel and like the video of Black Jack Productions. If you'd like to tell us and the viewers what movie we just reviewed. So, this was actually the first of Jim Carrey's movies in our nice, cool little Jim Carrey series. Yeah. Um... <clears throat> So, uh, this was the Sex and Violence Family Hour. If anyone who happens to see this knows what the Sex and Violence Family Hour is, please give us a rundown as to uh, like where it came from and if we, it's an actual series or not. We could not find this movie streamable. I couldn't pay somebody to give this movie to me of uh, anywhere. Amazon would not even ship me a, a VCR copy, numbers-wise. Well, I scoured the internet for... 80% of this movie, actually. I did, too. Mainly before. Um, there is no such budget that has ever been announced. There was no box office, because this movie would never be allowed in theaters. There was no nope. Rotten Tomato score. So there's no there's no audience score. Come on! Oh. I was able to find an, find an IMDb of 139 people that left reviews at an average of 4.7 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Um... So those are our numbers. Uh, Michael, why don't you get into tell us about the plot of this excellent movie? Well, the plot that I found online said it, it was a jumble of sexual skits such as The Big Salami, The Brady Bang, and Leather and Chains. But based off what I could recollect from this film, it was two guys trying to go for these several executives to try to get their show okayed to, uh, to go on television, or shows, I should say. And it was, it was just a bunch of sexual, violent-ish skits that look like were on the outtake floor of SNL from the 80s. This is supposed to be about Carrie. So how Carrie was Carrie in this, his first ever film? Um, I... Well, if you look at my pros, there's only one pro on my pro list, and that is Jim Carrey. He's... <laughs> like, it opened with an opening monologue of him talking in the most... Carry voice ever? Yes. It's not like he started out as like some backup young role that nobody cares about or a character that's not true to himself. It's like from his very first movie, he's true to himself in this mm -hmm. rendition. So that made me happy. Um, the thing, the list of things that did make me happy was the rest of the movie. My only notes for it, the plot was sex, and my takeaway for it was jokes. Um, uh, what about you, Mike? Uh, like I said, the pros, well, for me, it was just Jim Carrey, because even though he was not in it that much, every time he was on the screen, he I felt like he was the, the, the star of this uh, hour-long SNL skit. Um, my cons. Uh, the humor is very dirty and very cringy. I did laugh a couple times, but that was because it was just not. It's good. also extremely outdated. And um, outdated, yes. Nothing could be used today. I'm going to make Mike use the bleep. They used such profanities as, as if... Uh, they had uh, Nazi th references throughout the entire thing. Um, they made fun of gay people a lot. I'm surprised there wasn't a blackface scene in this at all. Um, they had slavery jokes throughout the movie. That wouldn't work today. They had jokes against women and misogyny, which also wouldn't work. Um, I, they didn't say <laughs> Mike, what else outdated things that they talk about other than the obvious nudity that, you, that, that I've missed? It maybe. just... For me, it was hard to pinpoint because... I had a hard time focusing on it because of just how going into my next con, it, it was very jarring. The pacing was very bad. Uh, yeah, especially with the in-between uh, free nude dance scenes in there. Um, some of the scenes that like they were trying to like progress the story in looked like they recorded this scene and forgot to do the lines, so they went back to the studio and recorded the lines over. 80% of this film was like some naked chick dancing and some dude in front of him like, look, it's a naked chick dancing. It's like, this was so bad. Dick McDick. Dick McDick, Jane or McJane. Um, let's not forget about... Uh, Luigi, Lu Luigi, Luigi. Who had a his big issue. And that was the main plot point, I think, of the main character, the protagonist, 
his issue was that he he was a short Italian guy that acted Italian and talked Italian, but he he was known for his Italian sausage, and if he talked to attractive women, his he would get an erection, like immediately, and it made his job difficult. So he had to go manage having an erection. Um, another con. Um, not enough Jim Carrey. He's in it very little. In the series is supposed to be about Jim Carrey, and I feel like we're gonna have a couple in this series of movies where he's only in it for a very little bit. Oh my fucking god! He, this, the the the, the movie's like still minutes. playing in the background behind the camera, and it's distracting. I'm not gonna go into detail what we're seeing right now because you'll just get. None of the uh, actors are accredited actors, and they had fake names that they used, similar to other movies like Thanks Killing, people who didn't want to be attributed for this work. The only person that was actually attributed was Jim Carrey. I usually have a little section where I have trivia. I only have one trivia thing because usually I pull my stuff from Rotten Tomatoes, INDB, and I kind of make some things from there. Um, they didn't have one, so I had to make up my own because nobody in the world thought to add any kind of trivia in this. My only trivia is the director of this movie I wanted to see what other kinds of movies he'd make. Maybe this was like a first early one where he just wanted to get some attention. Um, he's made a lot of other movies, but they're specifically Christmas movies. Like family-friendly Christmas music movies. It's the only other thing he's done. That's jarring. Um, I guess to kind of add to your trivia, since that's the only one you have, I took some notes of this film, of like my thoughts kind of add to it. They weren't really like a pro or con, but they're just kind of like stuff I would say out loud. This seems like a kind of movie that you would probably find in the dark, dirty corners of a blockbuster. Like, you know, the adult section that's always or, like, like curtained off. If you had like a creepy uncle that had like a porn stash, like in, in, in and he kept like the shit outside, like in a, in a thing, mm -hmm. this would be like a movie that he would have. And honestly, the pacing was so bad that I was like, okay, well, I'm just not going to pay attention for the middle part of the movie. And Mike's like, oh, movie's over. And I'm like, what happened, bro? It's been an after credit scene of naked dancing through the entire... <laughs> th um, this chick has literally been dancing naked in front of a mirror for the last ten minutes. Be the other ten minutes before that was another chick on a couch naked. Sexually trying to drink that champagne. Uh. Uh, my last little note is, uh, I wonder how much these actors got paid, or if they even wanted to do this. I guarantee you the females were probably just porn stars, and then they got, like, fucking deals where they're like, hey, look, it's free publicity. Anyways, are we ready to give our mystical ratings of this film? What, what was the message of this thing? The message for me was jokes. There's no message to this other than, hey, we want to show naked people. No science time. There's nothing scientific about this other than what's happening to your brain cells as you're watching this. <coughs> I'm gonna go out on the limb and make a very, very bold statement. So, this film is not as horrific as the worst film of this year so far that we reviewed. What's that? The oh. Fanatic. Yeah, but Fanatic had a story that they stuck to. I honestly think this is worse than the Fanatic. I. And it's just as offensive with the Nazi stuff. I mean, yes, it based off what you said, yes, it is. But I'm go for me. I'm going off kind of like and the most experience offensive. or whatever. I didn't really want it to. They literally had a gay person come out of the closet, and then immediately had a dude say, "Shut up." Yeah, I don't know. I just I, I don't know why I'm trying to say this is not as bad as the fanatic, even though it clearly it, it is. is worse than it is. I think it's just based off the experience. They're both I had. terrible, but this is way worse. I don't know. This it's... is like '80s fanatic. So I kind of want to rate rate our this series a little different. I, obviously, we would have our individual movie rating, but I think we needed we're kind of rating the legacy of, of of Carrie's career at this point. So how Carrie is Carrie in in this movie? Did he see comfortable in this film? Did he? I felt like they let him do a little bit. Like, this was his first time, and this kind of, like, le legacy-wise, as far as his legacy goes, like, it, it's... He doesn't have a legacy at this point. He's just some weird dude that did a mon monologue. But I felt like he had a lot of fun doing the monologue. Probably because he wasn't, like, anywhere near of the other scenes being filmed. <laughs> Honestly. Like he probably wasn't opening? even on set. The only part of the movie where I was like, oh, they actually put him in a room with a naked woman. That was it. 
Or the one he was president, too. He had, like, four scenes where he was randomly president. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try to figure out what president he was trying to impress. <laughs> this timeline would have been Reagan. My rating of this movie is a point one out of ten. And my rating of Jim Carrey's legacy at this time is a one out of ten because it's not very Carrey. It doesn't... Okay, um, I'm sorry. I am sorry. I had to. Oh my god, I'm glad you guys didn't have to see that because it was funny as fuck. I don't feel like I need to give a reason why this is a point one. It's awful. This is... I'm mainly asking why is it not a zero instead of a point one. Well, I don't give... I, I, I always say it's, 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 it's a... I don't give out zeros because they made a movie. If, it, if we just launched it and it was a black screen, I would give it a zero. But I do not give movies zero, because at least... I don't even know if this is an actual movie. Because <laughs> at least they put forward an effort to make something, whatever the fuck we just watched. <laughs> this is my new worst movie that we've watched. Not just in the year, but in the entirety of, of uh, Mike Check Productions, I don't think we've watched a movie that I felt like is worse. Okay, my rating for this is probably... I would have to go with a zero out of ten because I hand out zeros, so I just. But I'd probably say it'd be a two for the cariness. Come on! I, I, if I were to look at this outside the box, not not knowing who he is, those were the only parts of the movie where I was laughing. The biggest laugh out of me in the entire movie was the Dick McDickerson. <laughs> or or what, what what we just saw before I turned the TV off earlier. <laughs> yeah, and they they were definitely reused all of those scenes because I saw those already in the movie. If you like very low budget, very shitty, like grindy, grimy, dirty, cringy bullshit like this, that looks like an SNL skit, then it's the type of thing for you. But if you're anybody else, I would say. Don't buy it. Don't stream it. Don't watch it. Like, this seems like the kind of thing if I saw it on television, if it was okay for television, I would change the channel within the first five minutes. So, our next film is going to be All in Good Taste, which came out the same year. Is it an actual movie? Um, where he, well, the first one that we just watched was a direct-to-video, but this one yeah, does was, not say it's direct-to-video. Um, so, All in Good Taste, and he's on the cover a good sign. Here's the cover right here for the next film. But, oh, okay. That might not be that bad. It's literally going to be a guy, a guy that's in charge of making um, B-rated movies. In a B-rated movie. With nudity. Okay, well, uh, this is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort. Krieger Margin 1. And yeah. we're going to move on from the sex and violence ha uh, family hour to all in good taste, and we will enjoy the final movie of 1983, Jim Carrey's Life, A Year in Sex. In case I don't see ya, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.